Hi and welcome to this tutorial. If you've seen the past few tutorials on Spring AOP, you have a good idea of how to write different advice types in different stages in the execution of the target method. You can write an advice method to get executed before a target method. You can write advice that gets executed after the target method. And for the after case, we also have more de you know defined control. You can write a method that gets executed when the method completes successfully and also when there is an exception in the method. So with all the concepts that we have discussed so far, we have all the tools required to intercept and run advice at any point in the execution of the target method that we need, both before and after. There is one other advice type uh, that we haven't discussed. That's the one that I'm going to talk about today, which is the around advice. So the reason why we would need an around advice is if you happen to use all these different advice types if it's required for a particular use case. Say you have a target method and you want some you know, advice code to get executed both before as well as after. And uh, it could be any, any combination, but let's say you have some use case where uh, you know you, you need something to get executed, say, before the method runs and after the method completes successfully or before the method runs and after the method throws an exception. Or in other words, you want the advice method to run around your target method. Well, we can actually achieve this by writing a separate uh, advice method for uh, before and a separate advice for uh, after. But uh, if we use around, you have uh, a little more control and it's a little bit more powerful than uh, two separate before and after uh, advice methods. So we'll have a look at that. Um, what I'll do is I will use the same logging aspect and uh, I will write uh, advice method over here that works around the target method. So the annotation for this is at around. Let me import this from the same package that we've been using so far. Now I can write the method over here. I'll write my around advice is the method. Now the condition for an around advice method is that this advice has to take a compulsory method argument and that method argument is called the preceding join point. I'll define that preceding join point. Now I can import this here. And now I can write any code that I want over here. Now the around advice type is like any other advice that we've seen so far. You know, it takes a point get expression. Um, I will use this point get expression over here, the all getters. I will, you will see why in a minute. So, now what I've done is I've configured this around advice method to run for all getters. So this method will run around all getters. Now, whenever you write around advice methods, there are two things that you will compulsorily have to do. The first thing is something we've already seen. We need to have a proceeding join point as the you know, argument to the advice method itself. Uh, we could have more arguments depending on what your requirements are. Say, for example, if the point cut was something like this, you have to have name as an argument because you're catching all the parameters that have name. So probably name would be a separate argument over here. But uh, in this example, since we're using uh, this around advice for all getters, we don't need to have that. So irrespective of what other arguments you need based on your requirement, we need to have at least one argument, which is the preceding join point. It's compulsory. So this is one of the rules. The second rule is in your advice code, uh, if you want the actual target method to get executed, you will have to use the preceding join point dot proceed method. Now what does this do? The proceeding join point dot proceed method 
actually executes the method that this around advice is actually advising. So any time during the execution of this advice method, when this line of code appears, this is when the actual target method execution happens. So I hope this is clear how it's an around advice now. So what I can do here is I can actually write code before this call and I can actually write code after this call. So essentially I'm writing advice code around the actual target method execution. So the target method execution happens in this line and then I can have advice code that runs before this as well as after this. Now, when I said you need to have this line if you want the target method to get executed, what that also implies is we have a choice. We can, if we want, skip the execution of the target method entirely. So let's say I have some preconditions that I want to check here or I want to write, you know, I want to execute some code over here. And depending on the execution here, I can choose to execute this or not. And it's not compulsory, but if we need the target method to get, to get executed, that's when you actually need to write this line. But otherwise, you can actually bypass it. That is one of the real value adds that we get by an around advice that we cannot manage with the before and the after and the after returning and the after throwing. So this is one powerful feature of an around advice. We can decide whether or not the target method actually gets called. And of course, we can have code both before and after the execution of the target method, if at all we choose to do so. Okay, so now what I'll do first is add a try catch. I'll surround this with a try catch. And before the actual method execution happens, I will print out a statement. And then after the method executes, I have a catch block here and inside the catch, I'll write another sysout. And within the try, after returning, and then over here, after finally. So this is actually uh, self-explanatory what's happening here. So all the code that you write here is the before advice. So this gets executed before your target method gets executed. The target method gets executed by this line that I'm doing a preceding join point dot proceed. And then immediately after that, any code that you write here is an after returning because in case this results in an exception, it directly goes to the catch over here. So if the lines below get executed, that's because this has returned successfully. And then inside a catch, I'm catching a throwable. So any exception, it comes over here. We have a after throwing. So again, here I can have multiple catch blocks here. It's similar to you know the exceptions that you can catch over here in an after throwing. You can catch as many number of exceptions as you want and have different after throwing uh, advice code over here. And then finally, once you're out of the catch block or in, as a finally block over here, I can have a, you know a few more lines of code which actually correspond to a after finally annotation. So this is around advice in a nutshell. So the only special uh, considerations that you'll have to make when writing around advice is, first of all, you need to have a proceeding join point input and you need to do a proceeding join point dot proceed if you want the target method to get executed. And of course you can write code around this line inside your advice method. Now a question that I had when I first read about the around advisors, why use any other advice? Why not use around advice every time? Because that seems to be the most powerful of them. Well, the best practice here is to use the advice type, which is sufficient and necessary for the use case that you're trying to achieve. If you know that the code that you want to write as an advice has to run before 
the uh, target method runs, there is no reason why you should go for an around advice. It's actually recommended to write a before advice. So you need to choose the option. You need to use the least powerful option that serves the purpose. So if a before will serve the purpose, you should not go for an around. You should go for a before and then uh, you know, only if you have a requirement for an around advice, that's when you would choose the around advice. So the the advantages of the around advisors, first of all, you have more control. You can write different uh, lines of code around it. You can have method variables that are shared with the before code as well as the after code. So a local member variable that you have over here can be shared by both the codes. It's not uh, possible to do that in a thread safe manner if you have two different methods one for before and one for after and uh, the only other thing you need to note here is that if this returns a value say this is actually returning a value as it happens in this case this is a all getters so uh, this returns a value that needs to be sent to the calling program so in that case this advice cannot return a void it has to return the value that it's returning so let me call this a object so i do not know what this uh, you know this method is returning here it happens to be a string in that case i can actually mark this as a string but generally you would want to mark it as an object so that you are you know leaving the option open for any return type and then here finally what i do is i of course have to do this here i'll declare an object and I will use that object to get the return type over here and then I will have to return this object here return return value so this is what needs to be done in case the the target method is actually returning a value you can use that and uh, one more difference here is when compared to the after when we were talking about after i said we cannot modify the returned object we can of course use it see here we have a return string and uh, we're catching that object over here so we do get a handle to the object when you're using the after returning, but then you cannot modify it. You cannot, you cannot say, for example, send something else, but we do have that luxury over here. Now I have the object here. I can modify it. I can return whatever I want. So this is an additional way in which the around advice gives us some more control. Okay. So now we are all set. Now let's execute this. Now this is happening for all getters. So I will make sure the getter is called see here a get circle is what is uh, you know called over here this is a getter and this has to be uh, this has to trigger this around advice now let me remove this set name because we do not want the other advice to get executed at this time let's run this so here you can see uh, before advice is run after returning is run, and then uh, after finally is run. Now, if the method that we are calling over here had thrown an exception, in that case, what would happen is this catch block would have executed, and then the code which you know uh, gets executed is the after throwing. So essentially, this is what is the around advice. So you can write code that uh, gets executed at both before the target method you can control when the target method runs whether it runs or not and then you can have an after returning after throwing and uh, after finally and an additional uh, feature is you can get hold of the return value you can either modify it or return it as is so this concludes the uh, you know the advice types provided by spring aop starting with before, after, after returning, after throwing, and around. So I hope this was helpful.